Hello and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. We're on to self love. Part one. It's only been one day since Yuri's letter was delivered to Natsuki, with Monica's help. Yuri chose not to attend the club meeting that day. She and Natsuki hasn't faced each other since. Although it's only lunchtime, Yuri finds herself anxiously con counting the hours until she will need to face the outcome of her efforts. Whether good or bad, because the passing by of students was making her feel much more anxious, Yuri picked out the most secluded spot she could find to spend her lunch. The stairwell. Because the staircase is under maintenance, no student would ever have any reason for coming here. It's such a relaxing feeling to have a moment of solitude in the middle of a frantic school day. <laughs> Eep! <laughs> what are you doing here? Uh, it just... Here comes her book with enough force to wrinkle the pages beneath the pressure of her thumbs. What are you doing here? I just came to get a drink from the vending machine. <laughs> the other one is out of the drink I like. Your nose is... Nisuski fidgeting with a few coins between her fingers. She nods, avoiding eye contact. Nisuski, also looking away, shuffles over to the vending machine. So quiet that every one of her movements seemed to reverberate through the entire stairwell. <laughs> After far too long, she finally receives her beverage, which then fidgets with the, in the place of coins. Some kind of iced tea. When it's even light ray, Nisuski just stands in place. She glances all around her. It's like, way too quiet back here. It's creepy. I mean, that's not what I meant, really. I mean, it's totally cool that it's your thing or whatever. Like, I can see how it suits you, so. Not because I think you're a creeper or something. I didn't mean that either. You know, I'm just gonna stop talking. That seems like a good idea. It's okay. Everything is okay. Yuri finds herself attempting some words of comfort after hearing Natsuki stammer herself into dejection. <laughs> Seemingly in response, Natsuki approaches the base of the staircase and hesitantly sits herself down near Natsuki. I mean, Yuri. Well, I can leave if you want. Yuri shakes her head. Natsuki twists the cap off her drink and takes a sip. Despite receiving Yuri's gen general permission, Natsuki doesn't say anything anymore. Yuri continues to read, or at least pretends to. And the two just sit there for a long time. The tension seems to fade a little time, bit as time passes. Even without any words, it seems to mean at least something. That's not clear what that may be. Lunch ends more quickly than expected. Suski is the first to stand up with her empty drink bottle. Are you coming today? To the club? Here you're not. I'm sorry for being so awkward. I'm really bad at talking about this stuff. I just can't for some reason. I don't know why. But I want to eventually. There's no rush. I promise. Thanks. Oh. It's the next day. Nasuki appears from around the corner and steps up to the vending machine, glancing at Yuri as she does. Today she seems to be holding some kind of book as well. Oh, you're here again. <laughs> well, I just came here to read this because there aren't any people around here. Oh, I thought you didn't like how quiet it was. <laughs> well, I don't, but there's no people here. <laughs> I see. Nasuki sits down. The meal feels so much different today than it did yesterday. After yesterday's lunch and the club meeting that followed, Suski and Yuri are beginning to feel more relaxed around each other again. Though Yuri's letter is still lingering in the back of Natsuki's mind, she continues to detour about it. But it's okay that I'm here. Yeah, I don't care. Mostly just don't feel like dealing with the crap I get from my friends about it. Especially since, like, they all just assumed I stopped reading manga after I joined the literature club. Not that I'm trying to hide it from them exactly. But just don't want it to come up again now after I've waited so long for this new volume to come out. Literally months at this point. Don't have other friends who are into manga? Not unless on friend, online friends count. <laughs> it's Yuri, but that's different because she's not exactly into it, she just likes it. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. That's why you're lucky that the books you're into at least just look like books, so you don't have to feel like everyone is constantly judging you by what you're reading. That'd be so awful, especially since I already hate attention so much. Well, it's a good thing I have thick sin, I guess. By the way, I totally recommend finding some friends online if you haven't already. If you're like me and have no one to share your hobbies with. I have online friends. Since middle school, actually, I was especially desperate back then. It's somewhat embarrassing to reminisce about those days. Sometimes I feel like the me from a few years ago would have benefited from a good smack across the face. Ah, whatever, we are 
are all just stupid kids back then anyway. Some of the fanfics I wrote. Thank God I used the synonym. synonym. But I liked it at the time. Got a lot of fulfillment out of it. And plus, I can look back and say with confidence that I've become a better person since then. So I don't think I would change anything. I wonder if a few years from now we'll think the same thing about our current selves. <laughs> Probably. Does it make you uncomfortable? No, of course not. I don't care what other people think of me. Especially someone who doesn't even exist yet. Hmm. Alright, here. As she screws her hand to her face and forcefully slaps her own cheek. That's for me. F That's me from the future coming to terms with me right now. Also, ow, I didn't mean to do it that hard. Who doesn't seem to react? Then to Natsuki's sur surprise, Yuri shyly looks the other way at before lifting her arm and doing the same thing to herself, loudly smacking her cheek. She turns red and stares into her lap but is unable to hide a smile, as though it was a really funny joke. Well, that's what I'm talking about. I didn't know you had it in you. I don't, I don't even know why I did that. <laughs> Maybe you thought it would be funny. Sorry I keep distracting you. So you're looking forward to reading, but I'm going on all about this nonsense. Let you get to your reading. Oh, right. Yeah, I guess I'll do that then. The conversation ends quickly and Natsuki opens her book. The two read silently for the remainder of the lunch hour. The whole time, Neri feels distracted by a twist of regret over her, having so abruptly forced the end of the conversation. You're back. Yeah, I'm here to lay low again. Another day has passed. During lunchtime, Natsuki finds herself having wandered to the stairwell once more. Hey, did you buy that? Natsuki quickly noticed the bottle of iced tea on the staircase where she normally sits. Here now it's avoiding eye contact. What, like, for me? But you don't know I was coming here today, what if I didn't show up? Well, I just, I mean, I would have drank it myself, I guess. It was a stupid thing to do. No, it, it wasn't stupid. I just thought, never mind. I meant to say it's thank you. That's a really nice gesture. It's, it's okay if you don't feel that way. I do. Those are the other things that I didn't mean. I swear, please believe me. Hmm. <laughs> Here pauses and nods. Talking is hard. I get it wrong a lot too, so I believe you. Suzuki exhales in relief. She then sits down next to Yuri and takes the drink. Knowing Yuri, she was probably overthinking it too much that Nasuski's tepid response filled her with self-doubt. I'll do something nice for you next time. Please, don't feel obligated. I want to. I want to do nice things too. Okay, thank you. You thank me after I figure out how to do something nice. <laughs> I'll do it then too. Suzuki sighs. <laughs> Nothing. Just reminds me how I've been getting along with my friends lately. Is that why you've been coming here? Well, no, not exactly. I've been avoiding them on purpose or anything. It's just other things I'd rather be doing during lunch lately. I like being around them when we're all just having fun, but they also just can't take anything seriously. So I'm, I don't know, feeling serious. Their attitude just really got on my nerves. It's only gotten worse ever since I joined the literature club. How come? I don't know. I feel like I used to be really good with just putting up with something because it would be so stupid to cause trauma over a joke I didn't like or something. I just have a hard time doing that lately. But it's my fault being overly sensitive. If I have a problem, I'm not going to demand for everyone around me to change. But, yeah, I know. One can see I really don't agree with that kind of thing. Not in my position, so it's just for them to say that you should just communicate your feelings or whatever. It's not like my friend group does that kind of thing. I would just be making experiments myself. Sorry, none of this has anything to do with you. I don't know why I'm talking about it. It's okay. I like listening. What? Listen to other people's problems? Yes. <laughs> That's weird. Sorry. Just like learning about people. Do you think it's weird? No, no, that's not weird. Probably just wonder so, so. I don't know. Doesn't mean I should keep going. Yeah, if you like. Okay. Well, I don't know what to talk about now. Some things that you like about your friends. A lot of things. I mean, they're really fun to hang out with, like after school and on the weekends. I really like my baking. And it's fun to complain about school together. They make me laugh a lot, and we have a lot of good memories and inside jokes. Oh, I bet a lot of those things. So, are those all things that are important to you? Well, kind of, but they're not things I need to get out of everybody. Everyone in the cup is really different from that, but I'm still friends with them too. Well, Sayori really likes your baking, and she makes you laugh. 
And she complains a lot. <laughs> Doesn't mean she's anything like my other friends. I like them. She's a nice person who cares about your feelings. Excuse me. But you don't talk that way about my friends that you don't know anything about. So she stands up. No, wait. Sorry, I didn't mean it. I didn't want to say something bad. Please don't leave. That's Hisuki sighs and shakes her head. It's fine. I think it's understand that you can't just judge people like that. I'm sorry. Miss Hisuki sits bets down. You can't just compare friends like that and like measure who's better than who. Everyone's different. I'm sorry. I just I just don't like people who want to hurt you. A moment of silence stretches between them. They don't want to hurt me. We just like to tease each other about stupid things. It's fun. I don't like that. Well, that's why I'm friends with them, and you're not. You like it? Just don't worry so much about me. It's not worth it. I'm sorry. Wish I knew how to help with social conflicts, like how Monica can. She's good at these things. Not really. Also, I don't always want to help. Sometimes it's just stuff I have to deal with myself. So Monica and Sarah never seem to understand. Sometimes all you do is look at them wrong and they're all like, Oh, what's wrong? Is everything okay? I just want to mind my own business sometimes. Inside myself would want to talk about things. The only one who understands that is you. So you really should be so hard on yourself. You're not as bad as you think. You don't need to reassure me or anything. I mean that. Plus that it makes sense that someone who doesn't talk a lot would make a good listener. Thank you. You're also nice. It's really hard for me. It doesn't come naturally at all. It's so weird because I always thought of myself as someone who can just say whatever's on my mind. But I feel like that only works when I'm annoyed or upset or I want to say something mean. Why am I like that? You don't have to answer that. I'm just talking to myself. Your nods remain silent. Miss Hiski noticed her fidgeting with the pages of her book. How come you like reading so much? Um, a lot of reasons, but I just get sucked into it so easily. It's so immersive, like, I want to be a part of it. I think there are a lot of things about people in real life that makes me feel uncomfortable and frustrated. Especially when it comes to following social conventions and group interactions. Just don't really understand it and have no resolve to participate. But it's different with books. It feels like I always want to be around the characters. I feel such a strong emotional connection with them in ways that I've never felt with real people. So in that way, it can sometimes feel more real than real life. Really? It's that hard for you to be around people, like, all the time? Hmm, fairly often, especially in group settings. When people are making all kinds of con conversation and saying jokes and all that, I don't know what to do, and I just disengage. Oh, that doesn't get lonely? I don't think so. I still enjoy spending time with people one on one. And I have online friends too, of course. Do you ever do you ever wish that you could be friends with the characters in your books? All the time. Sometimes so badly that it makes my heart ache. Yeah. Me too. Really? Mm-hmm. A lot. Like more than anything. After Natsuki mutters that silence feels the stairwell once more. That's a mutual silence, one full of understanding. Oh. At least they're learning so much about each other. So I'll end this here. The uh, seawall in part two of self love.